This program takes a look at the reduction of organic compounds. To begin with though, I want to look at the opposite, the oxidation of organic compounds. And we covered this in our previous program. We can recall oxidation defined several ways. It could be the loss of electrons, um, an increase in the oxidation state. However, sometimes in organic chemistry, it's easier just to identify oxidation as either the gain of oxygen or the loss of hydrogen. So beginning with this compound, and we can recall this from earlier, this is a primary alcohol. Um, we oxidize that into an aldehyde. Let's look at what's happened to identify this as oxidation. To move from one species to the other, I could see that these hydrogens were removed. So here we have a loss of hydrogen, which constitutes oxidation. The reverse process though, however, is reduction. In reduction, we see the following patterns. The gain of electrons, a decrease in oxidation state, or we can follow the loss of oxygen and the gain of hydrogen. So moving this way is a reduction reaction. We accomplish that by means of a reducing agent, which we use this symbol for. I can see moving from this compound, again, which is an aldehyde to a primary alcohol. I can see that that has involved the addition of these hydrogens. which is one of my signs of reduction. Similarly, moving from here to here, we bring in our reducing agent and we can convert a carboxylic acid into an aldehyde. And I can recognize moving from this species over to this species, I can recognize that I've essentially lost an oxygen. Again, one of my signs of reduction. And here we have a ketone. Again, having it undergo reduction in the presence of a reducing agent, we end up with a secondary alcohol. Now, what are some of the properties of this, this reducing agent? Let's look at them over here briefly. Remember that a reducing agent is itself oxidized, which means it's got to lose electrons. So we're looking for something that has electrons that it can get rid of. A good candidate for that is the hydride ion, hydrogen possessing a minus one charge. That means it has one more electron than hydrogen, and there would be its Lewis structure. So the hydride ion is our good choice for a reducing agent. Now, this, these electrons are attracted to the carbon that's located here. Let's look at why that's the case. In the tug of war for electrons, oxygen wins. It has a higher electronegativity, so it would possess a slightly negative charge and the carbon a slightly positive charge. Opposites attract, so the fact that this is negative and this is positive is going to bring this over here. Substances which donate pairs of electrons or have electrons attracted to positive sites these are called nucleophiles. Nucleo, standing for nucleus, positive, file, liking. So positive liking substances would be attracted to this particular carbon. So uh, a good choice then for a, a reducing agent is something that contains hydride. So things might be say, sodium hydride, um, calcium hydride would make good reducing agents. 
There is one, though, you do need to be specially aware of. It's this one, which is a particularly strong reducing agent. If one was to use this reducing agent, one would go directly from the carboxylic acid all the way to the primary alcohol and bypass the aldehyde. So that's one you should probably commit to memory. Let's look at a couple of questions on this concept of reducing um, organic chemicals. My first one, is the conversion of ethene C2H4 to ethane C2H6 reduction or oxidation? Well, if we look at the two chemical formulas, we can see that we've gained hydrogen. We can recall that's one of our signs of reduction. Next one, methanol is treated with a reducing agent. Give the product. Well, methanol is an aldehyde. If I reduce it, I convert it to a primary alcohol. So let's look at the, the structure for that. Methanol um, would have this particular structure. I am now going to put in my reducing agent and produce a primary alcohol. So it would be a one carbon alcohol. So it would look like this. That, by the way, is methanol. B. Provide the balanced half reaction. Well, the formula for my methanol is carbon, hydrogen, CHO. That's the condensed formula for it. And methanol, CH3OH. To balance this, the first thing I look at is the carbons. There's one each. Look at the oxygens. There's one each. Now I need to balance the hydrogens by adding H+. So I would add two H pluses to balance that. And now I balance the charge by adding electrons. So this side would get two electrons. So that would be the reduction half reaction. I can recognize reduction because it's gaining electrons. And finally, the C part of the question, determine the changes in the oxidation state of carbon. So again, let's take a look at this formula first. So we're going from that to that. I'm going to say X is the oxidation state of carbon in this compound. So I've got carbon. I have two hydrogens, which are typically at plus one each in our organic chemicals. And we've got one oxygen at minus two. That total must be zero because there's no evidence of a charge here. And so that then gives me that X must equal zero. So the oxidation state of carbon here is zero. Let's look at it over in this compound. So I would have X. I have four hydrogens at plus one apiece and minus two. And that must again equal zero. Solving for X, I get negative two. So I can see here the change um, going from here to here. The change is it's gone down by two, or the change is negative two. Um, we can also recognize this again as reduction because we've had a reduction um, in the oxidation state. So that's it for a quick summary of the concepts of reduction in organic chemistry. Thanks for watching.